Good morning. Uh, it's a part of our uh, series of faculty lectures uh, from Research Advanced Surgery. Uh, today, I will go through the uh, update in management of uh, phylos tumors the best. So, let me share my screen. Is my slides visible? Yes, sir. Slides are visible. Sir. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we will have a brief overview of uh, recent updates in management of the phylos tumors of the breast. So, if you go to the history of uh, uh, phylos tumor, it was originally described by Jones Miller in 1838, and the term was given as cystosarcoma phylos. The term phylos means leaf like, and this describes the typical papillary projection seen on histology of this tumor. This phylos tumor has occasional cystic component, but this is not a true sarcoma, either by cellular origin or by biological behavior. And since then, there are a lot of names being given to these tumors. But WHO has applied the term phylos tumor from this group of tumors in the breast. So, hence, it's known as a just a phylos tumor, not cystosarcoma phylos. So, this is a very uh, uncommon breast tumor. It comprises less than 1% of breast lesions. But uh, the problem with this is, is it may appear uh, clinically, histologically, relatively similar to fibrodromas. Histologically, these tumors has stromal hypercellularity and a leaf-like architecture. Often, diagnosis of phylos is made after excision and biopsy. This phylos tumor may behave differently. It can behave like a benign tumor. It can behave like a borderline or a malignant excision. Surgical excision is the main step of treatment for all subtypes of phylos tumor. This occurs in a usually the middle-aged woman, and we say that this age group is 15 to 20 years older than fibroma group of patient. Although it is mainly in women, some reports of phylos tumor has been reported in men. Although we don't have the, the exact data, the US data says that uh, there was about 500 malignant phylos being reported in the year between 2004. So what is the etiology of uh, phylos tumors in the breast? It's largely, uh, genetic factors are largely unknown. There are some association between leaf from any syndrome and development of phylos tumor. Phylos tumor in man is associated with gynecomastia, suggesting among hormonal factors. There is stromal induction of phylos tumor by growth factors, the breast epithelium. And this is usually the endothelin one it is a breast fibrophage growth stimulator. Trauma, pregnancy, increased estrogen activity, and lactation has been implicated as factor stimulating the tumor growth. So what are the uh, pathophysiological changes in the uh, phylos tumor? Unlike breast carcinoma, which arises from the ducts or the lobules, the phylos tumor start outside of the lobules and ducts. It arises from the breast connective tissue like stroma, including the ligaments, fatty tissue around the lobules, ducts, limbs, and the blood vessels. In addition to the epithelial cells from the ducts and lobules, phylos tumor also contain stromal cells. Most likely, it developed de novo. There is some reports of progression of fibroma to phylos tumor has been reported. The important molecular features, there are uh, no chromosomal aberrations are found specific to particular phylos tumor. Some changes in genetic makeup in 1Q, 6Q, 13Q, 9P, 10P, and 5P has been reported. These are not uh, very important in uh, benign phylos tumors, but low grade and high grade in borderline malignant phylos tumor they segregate into two genetic groups. In high-grade phylos tumor, there is 1Q gain and 13Q loss in the chromosomal domain. In phylos, uh, borderline phylos tumor, there is interstitial deletion of 9P21 involving CDK, N2A locus, and 9P deletion. Uh, macroscopic appearance of this tumor. These are usually well circumscribed from <laughs> including masses in the breast. 
the cut surface appears tan or pink to gray and may present as fleshy and mucoid. This has got a characteristic hole pattern with curved clefts inside, resembling leaf buds in most very large lesions. Smaller lesions may have a homogeneous appearance. Hemorrhage or necrosis may be present in large lesions. So these are the usual cut surface of a phyllous tumor where you can see it may be either homogeneous or a variegated lesion with well subcrossed border. In micro examination, there is enhanced intracranicular growth pattern. There may be leaf-like projections into variable dilated laminated lumina. Epithelial components consist of luminal epithelial and epithelial cell staged into arc-like clefts surrounding stromal fronts. So these are the typical uh, history appearance of the phyllous tumors. Little like and there is stromal proliferation. <clears throat> the immunohistochemistry markers in uh, phyllous tumor includes P53, KI67, CD117, EGFR, P69, BEGF. These are expressed lowest in benign phyllous tumors and highest in malignant phyllous tumors. But none has been proven clinically useful. P53 expression and KI-60 index significantly is associated with disease-free and overall survival. This PAX-3 and SIX-1 expression has been found in uh, borderline malignant phyllus tumor to be associated with poor outcome. So how do you grade phyllus tumor? There are proposals for several grading system and it has been classified either as a benign, borderline, and malignant phyllous tumor. And this grading is based on histological grading of the tumor, the order of the tumor, stromal cellularity, mitotic figures, presence of atypia, and stromal overgrowth. So, uh, WHO also uh, describes similar characteristics of the tumor to describe the grades. So, what do you find in benign phyllous tumors? These are the commonest variety of phyllous tumor comprising 60 to 75 percent. Here, stroma are more cellular than in fibroadenomas. The spindle cell stroma nuclei are uniform. Mitosis are rare, generally less than 5 per 10 power field. There is stromal heterogeneity. There is spares stromal cellularity, hyalinization or mixture changes. Margins are usually well delimited okay. and pushing. Okay. In borderline phyllous tumor, all the adverse characteristics of malignant phyllos are absent, but it's borderline in because of frequent mitosis with 5 to 9 bar 10 high power field. There is moderate stromal cellularity, circumscribed or focally invasive border. There is stromal atypia and stromal overgrowth may be absent. In malignant phyllos tumors, there is marked nuclear pneumorphism of stromal cells. There is gross stromal overgrowth, <coughs> absence of epithelial elements in low power microscopic field containing only stroma. There is increased mitosis equal to or more than 10 per 10 high power field, increased stromal cellularity and diffuse infield border. Malignant phyllous tumors may behave like sarcomas. Metastasis to lungs are common. Nodal metastasis are very uncommon. Nodal evolution is not recommended in phyllous tumors. Individuals with metastasis disease has got very poor prognosis. So these are the uh, different characteristics of the benign, borderline, and malignant tumors of phyllous. How do they present? Uh, they usually present with a painless breast mass and often confused with fibronomas. But the typical age group of presentation is in a woman in 40s, which is 20 years plus the age group in fibrodermis. These are more common in Asian women and may present in the earlier age. The patient with P53 mutation like in Pleif Romani syndrome has increased risk of higher tumors. So the most common age is 45 to 49 years is a usually a painless rapid growing mass. Average size of fibrodermis is 2 cm while average phyllos and presentation is 4 to 7 cm. And average size varies in different types of phyllus tumors. It is average on 3.5 cm in benign, 6.6 in borderline, 
and 8.2 in malignant pilus tumor. This is one of the uh, large fibroid with increased vascularity. These are suggesting to be a malignant fibrous tumor. So what are the workup? How do you diagnose a uh, pylorus tumor? It's difficult to diagnose because as I said, sometimes this behavior may like a fibronoma and some features may be overlapping. And it can be difficult to diagnose even on radi radiological investigations. But following features may suggest pylorus tumors like larger size, hypertense appearance of mammography, heterogeneous echo, presence of round cyst within the mass and internal cleft and ultrasound. So cone little biopsy is confirmatory in most cases. So you have some uh, picture of uh, ultrasound. Uh, the ultrasound characters are the anteroposterior diameter of the phyllous tumor are smaller than the length. Phyllous tumors are lobulated surface. It has got a heterogeneous echo pattern. There may be absence of calcifications. Most of the solid appearing mass with single or multiple round or clip-like cystic spaces inside the tumor. Internal cabbages are appearing as hypoechic internal echoes. In borderline and malignant and benign phyllous tumor, there is no significant difference in tumor size. So this is a classical uh, ultrasound picture where you will find the anthropocytic diameter is less. It's a, like a heterogeneous equation. And inside the tumor, there are some, uh, you see, there are some cleft-like uh, appearance inside the tumor, which appears hyperequic. What is the appearance in mammography? See, in mammography, this appears a large rounded oval or lobulatory appearance. This is usually got a well circumcised smooth margins. A reduced halo may be present around the tumor. Sometimes, Calcification, typically coarse and plate-like calcification may be seen. So this is a classic appearance of mammography where you have a, a tumor with a peripheral halo and a dense uh, lobulated mass in the breast. Uh, MRI is not usually recommended in uh, routine diagnosis of uh, phyllous tumor, but in some cases, uh, it can have a typical appearance on MRI. In, in T1, image, it can appear as a hypointense mass. In T2, it can appear as a homogeneous high signal hyperintense mass. And in gadolinium contrast, these components enhance after constant administration. And this contrast is not washed off easily. It's an inhomogeneous signal with hemorrhagic cystic spaces. So this is a uh, typical, uh, this is the T1 the, the, emitted image where you have the hypo intense mass in the breast. This is a T2 emitted image with areas of uh, hyper intensity. After contrast, there is uh, intense uh, enhancement of the contrast following gadolinium. So, what is the management for uh, phyllous tumors? The mainstay of treatment is surgical excision. The initial surgical excision may be a little conservative. And one can go for re-excision of the tumor area with wider margin if final pathology follows tumor. To identify the cavity, one can mark the abscess, uh, uh, cavity of the tumor with clips so that this area can be identified subsequently during re-excision or during ultrasound. Breast consuming surgery is appropriate treatment for phyllous tumor if good aesthetic and oncologic outcomes are feasible. Previously, a, a clear margin of one centimeter was recommended for all types of phyllous tumor. But in benign phyllous tumor, a margin of one centimeter is being questioned and no longer recommended for management of benign phyllous tumor. Even in large section of benign phyllous tumor, a focally positive margin does not make a difference in outcome. There is no recurrence in such patients. Only prognostic indicator for recurrence is a positive margin though in case of borderline and malignant phyllous tumors. This is a benign phyllous tumor where it has been excised without breaching the capsule and wide margin is not required 
in benign phylous tumor. What is the indication of mastectomy in phylous tumor? BCA is the standard of care. But in view of large size of the phylous tumor, in nearly 50% of patients may require a mastectomy. And majority of the tumor which are larger than 5 cm may require mastectomy because of the breast size. A malignant phylous tumors, which are large, more than 5 cm, will require a mastectomy. However, regardless of surgical intervention, either a BCS or mastectomy, nodal evaluation is not recommended in, even in malignant phylous tumor because the nodal spread is uncommon. This is a mastectomy specimen where the very large uh, malignant phylo tumor, which is treated with simple mastectomy. What to do if you find a positive margin after excision? In benign phylous tumor, the option is either you wait and watch, keep for a close surveillance because the chance of recurrence is much less, or the option is going for a, either re-excision. For borderline and malignant phylous tumor, the incision guideline says you should go for a re-excision with a wider margin or mastectomy. There is a lure for adjuvant radiation. This radiation can decrease the local recurrence in case of a positive margin and in malignant phylous tumor. And the recurrence would cause a morbidity. So there is a role for giving adjuvant radiotherapy in this group of patients. So local recurrence is common. In up to 20% of patients may have local recurrence. And contemporary data has shown that the incidence of local recurrence is about 8 to 10% for benign phylos tumor, 13 to 14% for borderline, and 18% for malignant phylos tumors. However, the risk is much lower in borderline phylos tumors. So what are the uh, important nomogram for suspecting or predicting recurrence? This may be either a stromal atypia, Increased mitosis, stromal overgrowth, and the surgical margins. Mutations in proto-oncogenes like NF1, RV1, T53, PIG3, and EGFR has got higher rates of recurrence. So a guided decision-making in initial treatment as well as a decision to re-exercise versus for close surveillance in the setting of positive margin is required in this group of patients. 26% of benign phylos tumors and 21% of borderline tumors upgraded at recurrence. That means which is benign on first excision and the subsequent recurrence, it may be upgraded. And the time to recurrence is usually within three years. So, most of the recurrence require a repeat excision to negative margins or a mastectomy. And and in borderline, in malignant phylos tumor, this should be added with the adjuvant radiotherapy. So how, how do you uh, plan treatment for malignant phylos tumor? The malignant phylos tumor treatment is wide local excision with a one centimeter margin. Large malignant phylos tumor may require mastectomy. This malignant phylos tumor behave histologically similar to sarcomas. They may have metastasis at 22% on presentation. And most common site for medicine is the lung, followed by bone, heart, and liver. So if a patient with malignant tumor, a, a CT chest is required as a staging investigation. Patient having metastatic disease has got overall poor prognosis. Most dies within three years, regardless of systemic therapy. Surgical Excision the primary on the background of metastatic disease provides no benefit. So the local treatment will be individualized based on the local tumor status. <coughs> if the tumor is ulcerating, you can control the bleed or local uh, problem by doing a palliative mastectomy. What is the role of radiotherapy in uh, phylos tumors? The role of radiotherapy is still controversial. It has been recommended for borderline and malignant phylos tumor. <clears throat> so, in borderline malignant phylos tumor, a breast consuming surgery plus radiation provides better local control. 
However, advanced disease may require mastectomy plus radiation, but still may have a poorer outcome. So, in some studies, it is observed that radiotherapy recurrent disease is a moderate of treatment which can improve local control, but there is no improvement in overall surveillance disease free survival. Chemotherapy in phylostoma. Again, uh, the role of chemotherapy is uncertain. Some malignant pilot tumors has been treated with doxorubicin and docarbazine. There is no benefit in relapse free survival. So, chemotherapy is not routinely recommended in phylos tumors. It is considered on an individualized basis for large tumor or those with chest involvement. And for large tumors, chemoembolization has been reported. So, to conclude, phylos tumors are rare fibroepithelial lesions resembling benign fibronomas. Depending on the behavior, they can be classified as benign, borderline, or malignant phylos tumors. Imaging is required for diagnosis. Most commonly, USG and mammography for diagnosis. Some cases, you may resort to doing MRI, which shows typical findings of a uh, phylos tumor. The main step of treatment is complete surgical excision. Benign phylos tumors may be excised clearly without a wide margin. And even in focal positive margins, this patient may be either closely observed or may require re-excision. When there is re-excision, the tumor behavior may change. And re-excision will require, uh, re recurrence will require wide local excision and adjuvant radiation. Data on systemic therapy from malignant phylos tumor is sparse and it is not routinely recommended. Thank you. So, you can have uh, some discussion. Any question on this? Anything in the chat box? No, sir. There are no questions okay. in the chat box. Sir. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, um, after going for a, a triple test, then we should go for any metastatic workup or not? You see, if, if, if you have suspect that this patient has got a tumor which is growing rapidly, tumor size is more than 8 centimeter, you suspect malignant phylos tumor, and you have done a two-cut biopsy, that suggests it's a uh, malignant phylos tumor, then the standard of care is to do a metastatic work in the form of CCT chest. But sir, before the uh, um, histopathology uh, um, procode biopsy report comes, we don't know that is malignant or benign or That's borderline. Right. You, you wait, you wait to have them. Histop assessment is what? You have to have a histology report. So histology shows malignant phylos tumor. You should do a CCT chest as workup. As I said that uh, nodal uh, staging is not recorded in uh, phylos tumor. You examine the patient clinically and then... Uh, it's unlikely that lymphodes are involved. So, malignant phylos tumor on histology, the standard staging workup is a CCT chest. Thank you, sir. Okay. Ramayati, any comment? Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Saha. You have uh, given an elaborate and extensive discussion on the Pyloid tumor, but uh, still I believe the pyloid tumor have say, very much, uh, so many uh, concepts and so many myths and so many hidden things still there because uh, the itself the nature the it is a sarcoma uh, so and the limb node involvement are usually not common in pyloid tumor. But one uh, question usually may be asked. Uh, whether uh, it is an extended uh, group of ANDI or it is just totally outside ANDI? Actually, it is not ANDI because if you go by the behavior of the uh, phylos tumors, these are the tumors rising uh, from the stromal elements mainly outside the ducts. And, and if you go to the different uh, uh, histological characteristics, based on that, they are grouped as benign borderline and malignant. 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल दो बिनाइन फाइलर ट्यूमार्स देर हिस्टोलॉजी देर नेचार इफ इट इज ए स्मल इन सज अलमोस्ट सेम एज दैट अफ फाइब्रो एरोनोम सो येट इट इज भेरि डिफिकल्ट एज द सज अफ द फाइलर ट्यूमार दैट इज फ्रम स्मलर सज इवें यूर मेन्स एज यूर मेन्स एंड स्मल सज फाइलर ट्यूमार थ्री सेंटीमिटार फोर सेंटीमिटार सो द कन्फ्यूशन स्टील इज देयर हुएदार इट इज ए फाइलर ट्यूमार और ए फाइब्रो एडिनोम फॉर ए स्मल ट्यूमार फाइब्रो एडिनोम फाइब्रो ट्यूमार सो आई दैट इज ए कन्फ्यूशन स्टील टू मी आई बिलीव एंड रिगार्डिंग मैस्टेक्टोमी इन फाइलर ट्यूमार देर इज ए स्कोप ऑफ सबक्यूटिनियस मैस्टेक्टोमी दैट इज निपल प्रिजार्विंग मैस्टेक्टोमी I think uh, you heard your comment because phylar tumor it is alveolar in origin it is stromal and alveolar in origin it is not from the duct itself probably for that yes, reason sir. the scope of uh, nipple and areolar preservation is more is it is it true yes very true because even in carcinoma breast <coughs> even in carcinoma breast there is a role for doing uh, skin sparing uh, nipple sparing mastectomy so uh, same with the phylar uh, tumor there is a role for doing a uh, Subcutaneous mastectomy and primary reconstruction. Yeah, probably and, and, more with phylar tumor. Yeah, uh, nipple and, and, and uh, areolar preservation. The scope is much more in phylar tumor than in other cancerous disease. Yes, because there is no invasion to the skin and the subcutaneous tissue. And regarding this uh, difference in the phylar tumor and the uh, fibroadenomas, it is I already said that is difficult to diagnose on clinical behavior and on radiology. But there are some Classical radiologic features, where it, 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 even in ultrasound you will find in fibroadenomas versus phylar tumor, there are some cleft-like spaces inside, which may appear hyperechoic. And if you go to the um, uh, MRI, a, MR spectroscopy, MR spectroscopy and Gelderman contrast can give a good idea about this uh, phylar tumor because one of the curves uh, I have shown in the MRI is. If you give the patient Gelderman contrast, there is a progressive contrast enhancement in patients of phylar tumors. That is not found in fiber numbers, so it is difficult. But uh, there are some uh, pointers which may give a diagnosis of phylar tumor. Because most important to diagnose is a borderline and malignant phylar tumors, which gives more classic features. A benign, as I said, if in a benign phylar tumor, if you just do a Local excision, like fibroma, it's good enough. It, it, there is chance of recurrence, and even the recurrence may be observed. You can go for the excision. And the markers, what we have mentioned, uh, I don't know. Uh, in malignancy, the marker study is very commonly practiced. I don't know uh, in our exact uh, clinical practice in Kolkata or in other places. Uh, until now, days it is proved to be a uh, malignant phylar tumor. I don't know whether uh, it is being routinely practiced. Yeah, no, it's not routinely practiced. Your, your comments or idea, knowledge yeah. about that? Yeah, it's not really practiced. As I said, that these markers are not very specific. Also, these markers are not particularly helpful for decision making. So these markers are not routinely done. These are the markers which has been identified in. Uh, relation to these uh, tumors, these markers are not clinically practiced routinely in our patients. I don't, I don't know whether it is being practiced anywhere. Uh, any anyone is doing or not? Just uh, out of curiosity, I'm asking. Not that uh, these, these are part uh, of clinical. Uh, these are part of clinical trial. Our people are studying this large group of patient. They are they are studying this. Uh, another another uh, query. What is coming in my mind after uh, hearing uh, during your lecture that whether. Uh, Phyloid tumor can re, can coexist with malignancy, with cancer, carcinoma in the breast. Whether so case reports are there or uh, what is your comment regarding the no, coincidence of course. carcinoma with phyloid tumor, malignant phyloid tumor? No, I did not come across such situation. There is no correlation between because the etiological factors may be a little overlapping. You say that some uh, hormonal differences may cause uh phylos tumors but uh, no exact relation between the malignancy and uh, i mean duct carcinoma and phylos tumor has been seen another uh, query coming in my mind uh, because these questions are coming only after hearing your lectures 
because that has uh, raised more curiosity to know about uh, fibroid tumor. So we have seen uh, the incidence of malignancy in male breast is about 1% out of all malignancies. But whether any case reports are there in case of fibroid tumor in a male breast? Yes, I have mentioned already that patient having gynecomastia, patient having gynecomastia, there are some reports of uh, fibroid tumor in male breast and there they implicated that this might have some uh, hormonal influences because gynecomastia is because of hormonal influences. And patients with gynecomastia rarely may have uh, some fibroid tumor. So it's reported in men. It's very rare. But in uh, men also. Uh, gynecomastia we commonly find in the young breast. Until and unless it is a uh, it is a hormonal cause, most of the gynecomastia yeah. in the male in the young patient. But is it also true for the fibroid tumor? For the no, male it, patient? It is very rare. It's not I've not gone to the series, but it's said that it's very rare in male breast. Patient having gynecomastia may have some uh, incidence of phyllus tumor in male breast, and they implicated uh, hormone as an implicating factor for such. Okay. Sir, may I, may I ask you a question, sir? Yes, I can do. Yes, sir. Uh, is there any uh, role of mammography or biopsy, sir? Uh, because the uh, usual age uh, around 40 to 45 years, sir. Yes. I have already mentioned that any any breast any breast pathology, we, our workup is triple assessment, clinical examination, history and examination, imaging, and imaging will depend on your uh, availability and the age and the underlying pathology. You can do a mammography in all patient who are forty plus. Some some fibrous tumor may be better assessed on ultrasonography and maybe requiring a, a MRI. So you can do mammography, yes. And then as part of triple assessment, you need to do a tucan biopsy. And tucan biopsy will typify the underlying pathology. And this can give an idea whether it's a benign uh, phyllus tumor, is a borderline phyllus tumor or malignant phyllus tumor. These are what yes, you're right. Thank you, sir. The uh, common uh, finding for a large thyroid tumor uh, is the presence of a surface ulcer. Uh, uh, for the PGT, I am telling that uh, if it is a very large thyroid tumor, sometimes it is associated with ulcer, we should not uh, make mistake that it is a malignant ulcer or a stretched ulcer. It is just because of the stretching, there may be necrosis of the overlying skin. So that ulcer may be present in thyroid tumor, but the typical nature of malignant ulcer is always absent. It is uh, margin may be sometimes undermined because of the necrosis. Here the undermined margin is not due to the tuberculosis, but it is just a special necrosis of the surface skin. That finding, uh, it is very common we find for a large fibroid tumor. Is it, yeah, the main the differentiating of the carcinoma breast is, the main differentiating carcinoma breast is the, the age of the ulcer. Be undermined. That means there is a space between the tumor and the uh, skin. Mean in carcinoma of breast, the age will be inverted. So, uh, it, uh, in uh, thyroid tumor, the ulcer may look like a tubercular ulcer, but uh, and, it, and that differentiated from also the malignant ulcer in yeah. carcinoma. So we start on uh, February session from. With a OSCE session. These are uh, mainly for uh, exam going batches. So we'll have two uh, session on OSCE uh, scenarios. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.